setting yourself up for the ritual of, um, you know, before workouts and like getting uh, in that mental space, it just creates a a better intent going in. So, you know uh, what the focus specifically is so you can be more effective uh, in your workouts. It makes so much more of a difference instead of just like relying on momentum. I think so many people try to get there and that's the biggest thing is to just show up and and to get there now the next step is what intent are you bringing into this and what are you going to accomplish so my my theory on why people don't do this is i I think they just don't know that they don't know you don't realize how impactful that getting ready for that workout getting ready before you go to bed can be and how much return you can actually get it get it and I think you know us being able to articulate that for the audience, so they know that wow, it's, you're not wasting your time no. spending that extra ten to fifteen minutes to prep before that workout or to prep before you go to bed gives you so much more in re- in return. You just got to put the practice in and be consistent with it for a yeah. little bit to actually see so that. Think about the things in your life that are that are truly important, right? So okay, tr- exercise is important, diets is important, you know, getting good sleep is important, my family is important, like the time I spend with my kids, uh, the time I may spend with my partners. And so all you're doing is you're like, okay, I'm going to take the kids to the park. So then you, 10 minutes before, set the intention, prepare yourself, set yourself as, okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to try and be present. What is that going to look like? I'm going to take my phone and I'm going to put it in the stroller so that I don't, I'm not, you know, uh, I don't have an impulse to look at it, right? Right. Or I'm going to make sure I let people know I'm not going to respond to texts or whatever. Like that's just one small thing, but when you set yourself up, you're far more likely to be successful. At the very least, you're aware of your intent. At the very least, you make yourself aware of like, okay, this is important. This is what I'm going to do. And it makes a huge difference. All right, here's the giveaway for today's episode, the Sexy Athlete Bundle, Maps Aesthetic and Maps Performance. And I think there's some other free stuff in there. But anyway, we're going to give it away for free to one of you lucky viewers. Here's how you can get it. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you. You'll get free access to the Sexy Athlete Bundle. Also, running a big sale right now on another bundle. Three very popular MAPS programs have been put together and discounted. So MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, MAPS Anywhere. If you got them all at retail, it would cost you $361. But right now, you can get them for $99.99. If you're interested, and you should be, go to mapsapril.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. The most successful people set the stage for what is important. What does that mean? They prep for what is important. So you're going to do your workout, set yourself up for your workout. You want to have good sleep? Have a sleep routine. You want to have a good time with your family? Pause. Think about what you want to do with your family. Set the stage. Take those things seriously. Be proactive, not reactive. Boom. Thanks, Justin. What about the sex tip? I thought you were going to add to that. Uh, Yeah, you got to prepare. I was going for for the bumper sticker version of what you just said. I know. No, you know why this is a this is a a big deal. It's like um, like sleep is a big one, right? People talk about how tough it is for them to, you know, have quality sleep. And a lot of these people are health and fitness people that will ask us this question, and I'll say, okay, well, what do you do to get ready for your workout? Oh, I. You know, I go over it in my head and I have my pre-workout 30 minutes before and I do my mobility and then I have a great workout. I'm like, you don't just jump into your workout randomly. And they say, well, no, I don't do that because then my workout would suck. Well, you can't do that with sleep either, right? You can't just go from bright lights and hanging out to your head hits the pillow and then have good sleep. Listen, so you need lube. Sit the, <laughs> set the wow. stage. Thanks, Justin. Not even we're not even two minutes in, For Doug. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> we just lost ten thousand listeners. That's not, that's oh, not a sponsor either. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> no, but you know, uh, uh, you know, all joking aside, set the stage right. Um, who was it that we were listening to that talked about this with your family? Like, you come home from work. And you're in work mode and stress. That's Jordan Peterson. That yeah, don't Jordan, just walk in. Jordan Peterson. That's actually one of the um, one of the more impactful things that he's ever said. Although he said a ton of things that have been impactful in my life. That was one of the biggest things he ever said. Um, he, it was an interview with Joe Rogan. And he talked about like when you're getting ready for like a vacation or a trip, yeah. like you do all this like research, the best hotel, you read all the reviews, a restaurant, you play. I mean, we spend, you know, weeks Schedule on weeks. Activities, yeah, yeah, weeks on weeks on weeks preparing for this one week of your life that you're going to take off this this year, yet you come home every day and see your significant other for the first 
15 minutes, right? You walk in the door from work yes. and that, that same 15 minutes happens every single day of your life. And cumulatively, for, the, the time is so much more than the vacation. Yeah, you never really think about, you know, what, what uh, prepare for those yeah. 15 minutes and think like, hey, when I see my spouse, I want to make sure that I have you know, disconnected from my work. I'm completely present and that recognize that maybe she or he had a really rough day and that I want to set the tone for that. So the rest of our day and night is good. Which one's going to improve your life the most, right? right. It's, it's those opportunities that you have every day uh, that uh, will add up so much more substantially than to try and plan out some grandiose thing in the future. So oh. why, why is it, do you think that we neglect this? Like why we take it for granted? We, it's like we think things are just going to happen. Um, now, some stuff we don't, right? Like people who are really into working out, they don't take the workouts for granted. Like you talk to somebody who's really consistent. They have a, a protocol and a procedure and they plan for it. And they don't just like, oh, crap, go work out. It's, it's, it's much more – it's like they're, they're setting the stage, right? Um, I used to coach clients with this with nutrition. Like one of the first steps to helping you become more aware of how you eat and your connection to food and your relationship to food – is to pause, I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat, pause, think about how you feel, maybe even write down how you feel before you eat. All you're doing is you're, you're bringing awareness to yourself and to the situation, and it helps you make better decisions later on. You're actually setting yourself up. This is, look, uh, I, I remember thinking this when we all had dinner with Paul Check. We all were hanging out with Paul Check, he's a good friend of ours. I, I consider him the godfather of the wellness industry. I mean, this guy was saying stuff about wellness that now everybody says, he was saying it you know, 30 years ago. But I remember we're all sitting down and we put the food was put in front of us, beautiful meal. And he put his head down for like 30 seconds, came up and then he started eating. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know he was religious. And I said, Paul, are you religious? It looked like you were praying. And he goes, no, no, I'm not really praying. He goes, I'm just asking my body, is this going to nourish you? I'm asking, you know, my soul, is this what you want? How are you going to feel from this? And then, I, and then I eat and I thought, I wonder if one of the reasons why every culture has some kind of a ritual, usually around revolving around prayer before meals, if that's why, if it brings that awareness, you're creating, you you're eat. creating space. Yeah. It's a very similar exercise that you brought up the other day um, that I do this for the first time on air, but we've talked off air uh, where, how I, when I have this impulse to buy something, that oh, I, I, I put it in the shopping car and I don't say I can't have it. If I want it, I if I it. want it really bad, I can have it. I just make myself wait through the night and the next day, if I still want it, all in all I'm doing is creating that space so I can really ask myself, do I really need that? Mm -hmm. Or am I, am I buying this for myself or is it really for others? Or it's like, do I need it now? Mm -hmm. Is it going to still be like, and, and I, what ends up happening is nine times out of 10, I just, I don't do it. And it's nice because I don't feel like, I'm having to restrict or I can't do this. I have to yeah. discipline myself so hard. It's like, I'm telling myself I can have it if I want to. I'm just saying, hey, let's create a little bit of space there so I can process, you know, how much do I really want this? And what are my real intentions behind that? I think that there's tremendous value in yeah, that. Yeah, and back to like setting yourself up for the ritual of, um, you know, before workouts and like getting uh, in that mental space, it just creates – yeah, a, a better intent going in. Yes. So you know uh, what the focus specifically is so you can be more effective uh, in your workouts. It makes so much more of a difference totally. instead of just like relying on momentum. I think so many people try to get there and that's the biggest thing is to just show up and, and to get there. Now the next step is what intent are you bringing into this and what are you going to accomplish? So my, my theory on why people don't do this is I, I think they just don't know that they don't know. I yeah. think it's just a lack of information. Like for example, the the Jordan Peterson thing there. for me was just like that was such an aha moment when I heard that. And it was just because I'd never thought of it. That's that way. what I mean. We we take it for granted, not because you're trying to. Obviously, yeah. you're a good man. You're a good partner and a good father. Yeah, they just they don't know. Yeah, you, you just take it for granted. You like, don't oh, realize how impactful that getting ready for that workout, getting ready before you go to bed can be and how much return you can actually get it, get it. And I think, you know, us being able to articulate that for the audience so they know that wow, it's, you're not wasting your time. No. Spending that extra 10 to 15 minutes to prep before that workout or to prep before you go to bed gives you so much more in, re in return. You just got to put the practice in and be consistent with it for a yeah. little bit to actually see so that. So think about the things in your life that are that are truly important, right? So, okay, tr exercise is important. Diet's important. You know, getting good sleep is important. My family 
is important. Like the time I spend with my kids, uh, the time I may spend with my partners. And so all you're doing is you're like, okay, I'm going to take the kids to the park. So then you 10 minutes before set the intention, prepare yourself, set yourself as, okay, here's what's going to happen here. I'm going to try and be present. What is that going to look like? I'm going to take my phone and I'm going to put it in the stroller so that I don't, I'm not, you know, uh, I don't have an impulse to look at it. Right. right. Or I'm going to make sure I let people know I'm not going to respond to texts or whatever. Like that's just one small thing. But when you set yourself up, you're far more likely to be successful at the very least you're aware of your intent. At the very least, you make yourself aware of like, okay, this is important. This is what I'm going to do. And it makes a huge difference. And you can try this with one thing, like just do it with sleep 30 minutes before an hour before be like, okay, I'm going to bed at, you know, 10 o'clock or whatever the time is for you and say, okay, so it's nine. I want to have a good night of sleep. How can I make sure that'll happen over the next hour? Okay. I'm going to put my Felix Ray blue blocker glasses on, right? So reduce the amount of blue light that's coming in. I'm going to dim the lights, right? So like Jessica and I have uh, salt lamps that we put on instead of lights. So it's a much lower, it's not as bright. It's this kind of amb- you know, amber glow. doesn't affect you as much. I'm not going to eat, right? I don't want to eat an hour before because my digestive system also has a circadian rhythm. So my body's going to think, oh, it's not time to go to sleep. So I'm not going to eat anything. Um, you know, if you wake up in the middle of the night to go pee, maybe I won't drink any water. You know, maybe I'm a little amped. What can I do that's relaxing? I'll have some chamomile tea. I'll listen to an audio book that's uh, maybe, you know, uh, fiction, that's fun. Whatever it is for you, set yourself up way more successful. You have way more success when you do that rather than just expecting success to happen. You know, you know? 10 to ten to 15 years ago, I would I would scoff at a lot of that stuff. Totally. That you just said, Same. You know? And Same. I, I think why I would is because if you, if you, you know, take it out and you look at the studies that should, like, doing salt lamps every single night before you go to bed, like show me the study that shows that it burns more body fat, it builds more muscle or improves your life that much more. But the way I look at it now is that these are all things that they're, it's not a real, it's not a major life changing thing that I have to do to, to improve, you know, little bits of, of, of my life, the quality of it and the quality of my sleep, the quality of my, it's like, there's such subtle changes. Like I'm not asking someone to, go off the deep end on the woo woo side and don't ever do anything that's not organic. And it's like, no, it's not like that. It's like, Hey, is it really that big of a deal to change some light bulbs to a different color? Is it really that big of a deal to, to do candlelight? Huge of a step. It's not, it's not like this huge. And it doesn't, uh, by making those changes, it doesn't really impact my life negatively at all. And it's only a positive return. So even if it is a, one one thousandth return on me building muscle or burning body fat or how I would look at it before. It's such an easy thing to add into my life to make it better. Why wouldn't yeah. I? If 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 putting blue light, if putting Felix Ray glasses on, which you know uh, I like them because they don't change the color of everything. Because some people are like I don't want to wear orange or red. Well, fine, put those on. They're clear. Let's say they improve your sleep quality by three percent. Okay, you you go to bed every night. You improve your sleep quality by 3% over the next 10 years. Yeah, compounding interest. Profound impact on your health. Profound. And that's, it's cumulative. So no, you're not going to, and some people notice this huge difference right away, but really it's about it these small- the severity of your exposure, right? Yes. And it's also these small things that add up every single day. Like one workout's not going to make you fit, well, right? But a thousand <laughs> workouts will make you fit. It's funny we're talking about this because I've become so protective of that ritual and that process now because yes. you you feel the difference and, and you you know exactly what you're in for the next day if like all those chips don't line up for you. Um, and so like last night I had uh, all these kids over because- uh, Ethan had a delayed birthday party and like, so they have spring break this week. And so there's a bunch of kids available to hang out. And so we took them to a movie and it was like, what, a bunch of 12 year olds, dude. Yeah. Bunch of 11, 12 year old kids. Oh my God. Uh, and you know, I don't know if any other parents out there has tried to like a bunch of boys, you know, this age has tried to collectively, organize them and get them all to kind of, no you know, hang out, behave in, in, in a public setting. It's, it's quite stressful. <laughs> uh, so it was like, um, I mean, we're, we're trying to buy all these different, um, food items that they had very specific needs for. Um, <laughs> and because we're like, well, do we feed them or do we just, you know, just feed them whatever's at the movie theater. And so we decided to feed them whatever and we're getting them nachos and this and that and the other. And so we're making like 20 trips, you know, and then the kids are spilling it everywhere. Oh, 
I spilled it. This one kid like was eating uh, Skittles and, and like one of his teeth like fell out. What? And he's like bleeding. You're like, bleeding. I'm just like, all ah, on your watch. <laughs> yeah. What's happening? And they took all this energy, you know, back to the house. And, and the thing is, we you know, we barely ever like have the kids, they don't have that much access to sugar. And so it's like, you know, this is one of those times you're like, whatever, dude, this is a, it up. a party, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so they come back, they get Pazuki, this, they're running around like, you know, crazy oh my in my house all night. Did they and, all crash out at some point? No, they, <laughs> they would crash out. Then one would get up and mess with the others and you'd hear giggling and this and that. And so I had to check myself a bunch because I get like really like bare energy where like if somebody's waking me up and I'm really tired because I was tired and like I kept hearing like get up like Ugh! and she's like they're having fun you know Courtney check me a bit they're having fun calm down I'm like okay I'm fine I'm fine I'll just let them be and I would give them warnings and all bro, that bro when stuff. you're in that moment do you do you reflect and go like oh my god I'm my dad right now like I'm 100%. so acting like my dad <laughs> I get it because like I would get and he, he, he would use the big size and the low voice and like try and scare every, And so we were like legitimately scared to like wake him up. And I'm like, was kind of dabbling with that a lot. I'm like, you know, it's, I don't know. Like I, I wanted, I wanted them all to have a good time. And like, there's some kids that hadn't hung out before and I didn't want to leave a, that yeah, impression. Yeah. You don't want to be that dad. Yeah. I didn't want to be that dad. And and so I tried to have fun with it and it was cool. I saw them the next morning. They all had a great time, but they were just like zombies like yeah. all you over know, my house. You know what I struggle with like that is uh, the temperature, dude. I'm such a fl- oh, fucking- Oh, you're hilarious about bro, that. Bro, I- so funny. I fucking stomp and pout. Like, is it, like I can feel like the room change like by a degree. I swear to God, I'm that sensitive to temperature. And I know, so, and Katrina is cold. Like, so I'm always leaving the door open to let the air go- come in and she'll get up. Like she'll think I'm asleep because it was, we've been quiet laying there for, you know, whatever, however long. And I'll hear her get up. She'll walk over and close the door. And then like, and don't I touch t- it. Yeah. And I try, and I try not to, like, okay, I'm going to lay there. Then I can't sleep. Cause then all of a sudden I start to get hot. Yeah. Get up, <laughs> stomp out, go to the other room. So that's a dad all, thing. Dude. So <laughs> that's such and then a dad I, thing. I think back, I'm like, Oh my God, <sighs> like, my fucking dad was like this dude. You're like lots you're of changing. noises of frustration. Just, I used to think <sighs> that he had some sort of an alarm that used to buzz him when us kids used to get up in the middle of the night. Now my family used to do it because of like saving money. Right. So in the summertime, our house would be so hot. They wouldn't run the AC. We'd keep it at like 75 in the house. And then the opposite is true in the winter. And I swear as kids in the middle of the night, we'd get up there and we'd go change the temperature. So we get a little bit of heat in there and then you'd hear my stepdad boom, 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 coming out there who touched the who thermostat touched when i when i was a kid if if you could if a jacket solved your problem then that's what you did in the house like yeah. literally like oh you're cold put a yeah. jacket on yeah. mittens and yeah. i remember i was like we're in the house what am i gonna wear a big ass parka for like what's the difference just Might put well on a jacket. outside I use live, a blanket i, I you're live totally by fine. those rules now it's so it, it's hilarious is your is your is your kid at the point yet justin where he's like you know when kids get like close to teenage years where they're kind of uh-huh. like, you're not cool anymore or you start to see that a little bit so i it's sort of borderline with that because it, what's interesting is like i caught a couple of their conversations and just driving or um kind of in the background i was just listening and he brought up he's like yeah my dad's famous <laughs> no, <laughs> <Your son did? laughs> and i'm like i turn over i'm just like uh, who are you, what are you talking <laughs> yeah. about, dude? You know, you know, like, like all nonchalant, like yeah, no big deal. Nonchalant. Yeah, my dad's kind of famous. Like, yeah, he's like trying to build a case for me with his friends. I'm like, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. like, please don't tell them that. You know, like just be cool, dude. Yeah. Like I'm trying to like coach him on, you know, not being all. My daughter's like, guy. <laughs> I'll drop my daughter off at at school or whatever, and like as we're pulling up, she's like, turn the radio down, turn yeah. it down, turn. Like I have to mute it because God forbid I open the door. And anybody hears whatever music I'm playing, I'll, so I'm like, oh my God. You're in you? Like yeah. full blast? <laughs> Dad, please. It doesn't matter what please. it is. It, I know. It doesn't matter what it is. Hey, this you're is coming up on, so uh, you guys, are you uh, going to put Aurelius in a Montessori school? I thought I heard Jessica say that. Are you guys doing Maybe. that Maybe. Yeah. Oh, you're not for sure not yet. Not yet. Not yet, but soon. Yeah, soon, right? Is yes. that coming up? Because it, I, we did it too, so I know you're. How far until? No, I think we might wait a little longer. Oh, um, you're thinking about waiting. I, you know, yeah, it, it maybe, maybe two or three, but uh, we like their approach. We definitely like their approach. You know, what we did. We bought a bunch of toys and stuff that were Montessori. So I, I, so after you started talking about Montessori, I had heard a lot of good things about them yeah. from other clients and friends. 
So I did a little bit of research. It was a, she was a, a, a teacher and a researcher. Mm -hmm. For special needs. Yeah, and just brilliant approaches. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she talked about, because I didn't, I didn't go deep, super deep, but one thing really struck me is that they, she talked about giving your child the ability to do things for themselves. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, in their room, if you look at a kid's room, like bookshelves are way up here. Like little kids are short. Why would a bookshelf be up here? They're always gonna have to ask for mom or dad to grab the book. So she recommends you put the bookshelves real low. You make everything their height so that they can, or the things that are appropriate, I should say, that so they can do things for themselves, or at least they can do them with you so they can learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. So they have, there's like this stool that uh, was, is Montessori inspired where I can stand my son in it and he's, it's, it's protected. So it's kind of like caged off, if you will. He can stand in it and he's now at counter height. Mm -hmm. So when we eat, He'll stand there sometimes when we're snacking and he's standing there with us while we're, or if we're all hanging out, he'll want to go up, we'll put him up there and then he likes to be kind of a part of it. Um, and it's pretty cool. Or he'll go over his bookshelf or his toys are all low. And she also talked about like not having like a bazillion toys out, but rather having a few well-organized so ones. Focus. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it's really smart stuff. So I like you know, it we, it Katrina smart. actually saw the first time, like how much that's paid off that we did things like that. Uh, now. So we had, uh, the house cleaner had brought her kid over like a couple of weeks ago and the girl was like maybe a couple of years older. And she's like, Oh my God, I, for, I didn't realize how well we had trained Max mm. about playing with one toy. So his thing is like, it was like a, this, and this started before even Montessori school. I would, would tell her like, oh, one of my biggest pet peeves is like, I don't want to be the the couple that as soon as we have a kids, we just ride off, like taking, taking care of the house. Like, ah, uh -huh. oh, just fuck it. We got kids, let it happen and just let toys be everywhere. I'm like, I really want to teach them at a young age. And I said, you know, it'll take a lot of work and effort from you and I, and we're going to have to do it for a while. But once we do it enough, he'll be trained that way. And so he has, he will play with a toy when he's done with that toy and we have to remind him still sometimes he's not a hundred percent perfect, but if we remind him, he will like, if he goes in his closet, you'll get another one before he puts that one. Oh, Max, are we done with the puzzles? That's good. Let's put your puzzles away and he'll put the puzzles away. She said, I didn't realize how well we did on that until I had somebody else. She goes, I walked away for like a minute. She goes, literally his entire closet was out in the like living room like everywhere. Bomb went off. Yeah, yeah. Like a, like a oh, bomb went off. Yeah, so those. It, it, it definitely pays off if you, if you stick with it. And I mean, he's, he's done really well with that right now. I'm struggling with, uh, so we, the original Montessori school that we try to get in, uh, there was like a crazy, you know, year and a half, two year wait list. So we, we finally came up on that. And Katrina's like, hey, I'm going to switch them to the school that we originally really wanted. Uh, do you care? And I'm like, no, it's your call. I mean, you're the one who kind of drops him off. I said, I, I mean, if you feel like he's learning well and doing well in this one, it's about the same price. It's not much of a difference. It's actually a little bit further even drive for her. I said, it's, it's up to you. And she's like, well, I really want to, I really want to go. And I said, well, the one thing I'm worried about is again, you, cause you drop them off is, you know, changing the environment, like a new place. So, and she, today was his first day. So she, she called me and she goes, oh my God, today was so hard. She goes, but did he not want to go? Oh yeah. Oh, and oh, he's yeah. like banging on the door to come oh, out. Oh, I hate that. Oh dude. It's I just I, unfamiliar. She, yeah. yeah. She you tells, feel like an asshole. You know? I can't do it. There's no, I'm just straight up. Like I don't, I, I would totally cave. I'm so bad. There's dude. certain things I'm a hard ass on and there's other <laughs> things like I'm a softy on and like. My boy, like crying for me oh, and banging God, the door, like I have, I'm leaving back, him. Dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I told you guys, I, I, I would was just getting him like playing with blocks. Yeah. I remember taking him down to this daycare center. We, you know, we, the play school where they did a lot of the similar things and like would help like them learn how to build and do all these cool things. And I'm like sitting there building with him, and I'm like, and the teacher's like, "You're gonna have to go." And yeah. I was like, Whew. and I just quickly just bounced while he was still building, and then he's looking around, and I hear him start crying. <laughs> yeah. Oh. God killed me dude that's the worst that, I, that and the shot right the two things those are right the, those, yeah. are, the those two are the two times. like so far as a dad have been the hardest moments for me have been bro how do you yeah. not cry i cried both yeah. times i my, my it's what, the look you get yes when they were like the first two you shots betrayed them yeah the first two shots were so basic it nothing happened but about the third shot when he was starting to like become more aware and yeah. your whole he looks like they look you at totally, you like why, why yeah did you let yeah why did you let him do that's that that's the thing that's like a slow cry it's like oh my god because you you feel like your job above anything else is to protect your kid and yeah. that's what happened to me is like i dropped my kid off at school for the first time and we had worked up to it you're going to be brave it's going to be fun i'm going to be brave i'm going to be brave and then he's playing but he's staying super close to me and won't let go of my hand and then the teacher same thing you got to go so i'm like okay buddy i got to go now and he hugs me and then i i have to peel him off and he's holding on to my shirt and he's looking at me with terror no 
no. And I'm like, it devastated. Like, I just <laughs> betrayed my kid. And then the same thing with the shot. Uh, he got a shot and he looked at me and he went, Papa. And then he started crying. I'm like, oh, God. I just, <laughs> Those just are the two hardest. my kid. Those man. are the two hardest so far. Messed I haven't had anything day. yet that I feel like has just been like crippling or heartbreaking for me. Oh. Those two things I've like, man, that's just, that's about as, as tough as it's yeah. been for right me. Right now right we there. do, we're, we're messing with time out a little bit, but I tell you, my. Oh, you guys are doing that already, huh? We are because he does, he gets, if he gets frustrated. Yeah. He'll grab, and he's a strong little kid. He's got yeah. his mom's genetics. He'll grab your face and squeeze the shit out of it. And, yeah. and it's like, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Part of it's my fault because he would do it to me, and I, I would, it didn't bother me, so I'd let him do it. But then he did Jessica, and it hurt. And I'm like, you know what? He's, he can't be doing this. So we'll put him in timeout, but he's a little shit about it. Like, I'll be like, you're going in timeout. He'll walk over to the timeout and grab his timer, put it up there, and wait. Like, okay, put me in timeout. I'm like, damn, dude. <laughs> dude that's like ever, dude. I know. Like, all I right. I tried punt, and he just was like, bring it on. You know, like, do you remember how old you, so we haven't done any of that yet. So we, but we really haven't, I've been, I've told you guys before. I'm like, I'm, I'm lucky. And I know probably people fucking hate me saying that. They probably, he like, might be a crazy teenager. Right. You know, like, I, was like, who knows, knows, or like I know the second too. one will probably be a nightmare because See, that's of that. the thing. Yeah. You just don't know person. But right now we haven't had like the, I told you guys the, the little the, angel kid, the tantrum yeah. thing is like, a, like almost it's comical. Like cute, yeah. It's cute. Inning, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, even he has his new thing too, right now. He was doing it last night in the bath with me and it was time to get out of the bath. I was like, all right, Max, time to get out of the bath. We go read your books. He's like, no. He's just telling me, he's like, no. He just no. And I'm like, okay, pull the drain. Then he goes and puts the train like that. I said, no, Max, we're we're getting out. So and after I tell him a second time, he doesn't do it. And then he goes, uh, 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 uh. It's, <laughs> and I just started laughing, dude. It's like, bro, it's not even a real cry. Yeah. I'm like, if you're gonna do it, get some real water works you going. Cry harder, kid. <laughs> yeah, you better cry harder than that if you're gonna get my attention. I'm yeah, like, dude. that's just funny to me, dude. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, my daughter, man, she used to throw tantrums. I swear to God, if you could hook up cables to her, she'd power a city. <laughs> the amount of energy she would put off. Oh my God, what they met. Oh, I told you, you know, the other thing we had a hard time with, I don't know if I shared on the podcast, I think I did tell you guys though, is uh, there was a small transition we had there of um, he, so Katrina, when she'd go shopping, and I didn't experience this till later because she normally is shopping within the daytime, is he had a hard time with uh, when he would get something in the cart, when we go up to scan it. Oh, he don't want to give it to the Yeah, person. he thought yeah. they were taking it from him. And so he would, ah! yeah. <laughs> But then they'd give it back to him and he'd be fine. But we went through that phase for like a couple of months. Once he got to the age where Katrina and I could talk to him and say, no, no, no they're going to scan it. They're going to give it back to you. Then he understood. Yeah. But during that little phase of not being able to understand, I mean, I really feel like a lot of that frustration that a kid gets aside let's let's assume that they are growing up in a yeah. healthy good house their parents aren't fine a lot of it's just the frustration of being not being able to communicate right it's with also their, the, their they they have emotions that they are they're new right, right. and they don't know how to deal with Try it to, yeah reconcile with yeah it. and so it's just this you know what was that cartoon it was so good uh and it showed like when a, oh, when a kid yeah. grows up what was it called? Oh, wasn't that a Pixar movie? It was the Pixar. One, yeah, with all the different emotions. It was so good, you know, because yeah. a girl grows up. What and are you her, talking about? That was one of the only movies I, I, I'd i seen, up, like, a, a real deep cry out of, like, my kids, and they watched it. They, they like... They understood. They were like, oh. Which one are you guys it's, talking so about? So it's this girl, and she their family moves, and she's a little kid, and she only has, like, three emotions, like a little kid will. Yeah. But then she starts to grow up. And all of a sudden, emotions get real complex, and it displays the oh, emotions inside out. Inside, inside out. out yeah. Oh yeah, that's what the big white uh, yeah. blow up doll. So they're thing, like right? inside no, this that, head. Isn't that, what uh, is that? What is that these one? Characters inside, like what's the one I'm thinking about? I know what you're talking that's a totally about. Different. That's I can't a robot. think. I, Which yeah. one? You yeah, know, no, yeah, he's like a big white one, right? Yeah, it's not inside no, out. This inside out is no. on. Yeah, like show me a picture, John. That's why you're up there. Inside, if you haven't seen it, you. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, Come on, guy. <laughs> that's, that's what are you doing my, over there? My life's Por purpose, right? Over here. there, porn searching while we're trying to do a yeah, podcast. You got no. like, this guy that represents anger is one of oh, the yeah, sadness. I've never, oh, I've never uh, seen that one. Oh, you haven't? Joy. No. Oh, it's actually pretty good. It's, it's really, really smart. It's a really smart it. movie. Yeah, to, for, the especially for kids that understand emotions. Not eight? No, oh, no, yeah, no, 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 no. You're, it's the, it's you know the what one, I'm talking about, Yeah, right? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's the kid, in, he's in Japan. Something he builds, Hero. Oh, Hero uh, 8. Yes. It's called Hero or Hero I 8. I thought 8 was in it. No, Hero, no, no. Big, Big Hero, Hero Six. six. Oh, Hero six. six. There's some number in there. Boy, yeah. we are. So <laughs> yeah. 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 Hero Eight. Uh, Hero Eight's GoPro. It's all over the place. <laughs> Bunch of old guys. That was off. That was off. Bunch of old guys <laughs> in here. We'll yeah. figure it out. Doug's yeah. like, yeah. Doug's like Snow White, yeah. Cinderella. <laughs> ah, Big Hero Six. That's Big, it. Right. Yeah, I like Hero that seven. movie. That was a good movie. That was actually good. Hey, speaking of smart, Elon Musk, huh? So we talked about that already. He's now on the board. They put him on the board, dude. I can't wait. Quick. 
I can't. He's the wait. largest ship. Well, and show he's one. already. You see all well, the yeah, I mean, the the tweets he's doing, all the polls that he's doing, right? Where he's asking people, "Oh, should you be able to edit?" And then like eighty percent of people are saying, "Other yeah. other Twitter like executives are now doing polls for the first time." Hey, what do you guys think about this? Everyone's like, "That's weird." Did you see the CEO? Oh, did weird. A we have a say in this now? Yeah. Like, you want to know what the consumers actually want? Did you see that the the CEO is like, "Yeah, we're very happy to have him on the board." Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, he's your boss now." That's why <laughs> I, I was telling you guys off air, man. I really hope they make like a movie about like this whole situation. So like, crazy because uh, uh, to be a fly on the wall and hear the boardroom before totally. and after, like what that all went, what that was, what's and what's going on right now. Like how many people are just flipping out right now, like wanting the to panic from the employees. Dude, yes, the same like, people that were like, "It's a private company; they can do what they want," which is true. I st stand behind that. Then I'll stand behind it. Now I stand behind it with Instagram. It kicked me off. So I, I, I 100. But those same people now are like, "This is a threat to free speech, and we need to hear with your we need to have government oversight." Hypocritical Bro, bullshit. Shut up, Elon dude. must be uh, being involved. Being a threat to, is like a, an oxymoron. Like yeah, that's no. not. It's he opposite. wants it to be free, free. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like the complete opposite. Any any predictions on what you think he's any any changes? he's going to do anything i think i think the well, one thing he might try to do which would be unbelievable bring alex jones back i don't like him putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin frogs gay no no <laughs> please elon he's so entertaining though. yeah he's the best i think i'm i'm hoping he makes the algorithm open source so people know that way there's no controversy of are they censoring this are they censoring that what's the deal it's all open we see what it is so it's all out there I mean, I think all of the platforms, I think Google should be that way. I think Apple iTunes should be that way. The podcast. I mean, we the other day we saw that article for the first time, right? Like that was all new to us. We didn't, I mean, yeah. this whole time we were driving reviews. Reviews oh, had about, nothing to do with our, our ranking on the, on the podcast. No, no, it doesn't. So no. I, I wish that all these platforms yeah, shared transparency. Yeah, yeah. It'd be great. Cause then what ends up happening is a few people that have inside information that do know it have a huge competitive edge compared to everybody else. And you, it's not necessarily the best content creators that are winning at this. And I, and I said this before, yeah. they are private companies. They should be able to do whatever they want, but you, you have to be consistent because you're just asking for trouble when you're not. When you're not yeah. consistent, when you're kicking this person off, but not this person over here, and they're doing the same well, thing, or maybe this guy's even worse, or you got to be careful. Regardless of how you feel about their content, their anger is justified when you don't make that clear why you're just like removing them. Dude, if I, I don't know why you wouldn't structure it to, just like the telephone company. Like, why wouldn't you structure you, you it like that where you just are completely hands off and it's just like, we provide a service to allow people to communicate. We do not get involved in the communication. If you did that, then what would happen is it would lose a lot of people. Think of the garbage and shit and smut that would appear on Twitter, if that were to happen, like the the terror, like the, the internet is there's so many people and it's anonymous. See, I almost feel like there would be a way to to segment it right to where it's like, okay, if you have Maybe put warnings or like, or or I, that or that that type of stuff. Okay, the people the the if you're doing things like that, like, like let's just say prostitution, illegal stuff, it, it or even are, just hateful, like really seriously hateful attacking type shit, right? I mean, again, th that happens on phone calls all the time. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So that happens on phone. And so now because the, I guess the public can see it, other people can see it, but at the end of the day, it's, I, I, I would say, treat well, it the same way that I would as the phone. So service. I heard of this other um, social media company that was trying to be competitive and um, try to be more like open source or whatever uh, in, in more of a democracy. They were actually trying to make it so the community itself would, would be the jury. So in terms of like somebody's offenses, like they would present uh, the cases of their tweets or whatever it was, you know, their content and, that, that they were gonna and then they would have the community itself uh, vote whether or not to keep them. Now, the only, pro know. the only problem with that is that that's the opposite of free speech, right? Uh, like Sal always says this, right? Free, free speech that was put in place to protect unpopular speech. Yeah, sure. So if it would vote out all the unpopular speech, then that would be the but definition. But then what if of you get terrorists beheading people and videos. And I think I think you need to have clear standards and, right. and it has to be consistent and you have to make it as totally. public as possible. Otherwise, you open yourself up for the kind of scrutiny that then invites government regulation because at, look, social media was attacked when Trump won. They said uh, they didn't do a good job 
of, you know, uh, censoring disinformation and, you know, hackers. And that's why then they get attacked because they're censoring the right now. So both sides uh, are, are going after social media and they open themselves up because they're so secretive and they're inconsistent and they'll destroy their own business. You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. It, 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 rem and it reminds me in some way of the supplement industry. It's like the supplement industry is, Mo is largely unregulated. I mean, you can't poison someone and stuff like that or have banned substances, but it's largely unregulated. And what supplement companies often do is shoot themselves in the foot by selling products that don't have what they say they do or have something else in the bottle or breaking rules or whatever um, and doing and, or, or committing fraud. You do that enough times. Like how many investigations have you seen where they go test 10 supplement companies Nine of them don't even have what they say they do. Yeah. You do that enough times, you'll get public support behind regulation. Now we're not going to have a supplement industry. We'll have a regulated industry, and now vitamin C costs 50 bucks, and you don't have creatine anymore. Now it's prescription or whatever. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what you got to be careful for because social media's invited that, right? But anyway, I'm happy that that someone like Elon is now has a say because he, he seems to be a consistent free speech guy. He knows how important. Uh, that Seems aspect to be. is yeah. yeah so we'll see. Is the point. Yeah, Did you guys yeah. see our uh, our friend Dr. Becky Campbell? Did you see? I reposted her oh, little yeah. before and after. She used to be like hardcore like Transition cardio. Transition from yeah, yeah. she was super training looks great. to now weight she training. She looks great. She's built, different body. Built a lot of muscle. Really sped up her metabolism. Way more energy. You can say it. She built a great butt. She did, and she yeah. you know a lot of this was we you know we had conversations with her when we met, and her and I um, talk a lot. Uh, you know, as friends, and she's helped Jessica quite a bit. Love her by the way. She's a great. Uh, functional medicine yeah. practitioner. Courtney loves her recipes. Yeah. Use them all the time. If you don't follow her, you need to. She's one of the best and they have a great podcast too. But anyways, she, you know, I talked to her about strength training and she said, you know, you're right. Um, you know, she knows she understands the body as well. She's like, I'm going to give it a shot. Blown away. She's blown away by how it felt. Um, and that's cool. You know, when you experience something like that, I think you become better at communicating it. Right. So mm -hmm. she's like this huge advocate now for, you know, for strength training because now she's experienced it herself. Speaking of which, did you guys see, I don't think you guys saw this. Have you seen the studies coming out comparing intramuscular? So this is for people on hormone therapy. Intramuscular injections, which is traditionally how yeah. things like testosterone are given, yeah. mm -hmm. versus sub-Q, right? Where you just inject it almost like insulin just under the so fat. So it doesn't go quite as uh, deep. No. So there's two, right? So intramuscular, big, you know, three-inch, you know, I don't know, 23-inch gauge needle or whatever in the muscle. Yeah. Sub-Q is a tiny insulin needle you pinch the fat, goes in the fat, and you put it in there. Um, and the argument always was the, these need to be intramuscular. But a lot of people were saying sub-Q could work just fine. You should do sub-Q. And everybody's like, no, all the studies are done intramuscular. Well, they did a study hmm. on sub-Q versus intramuscular. You know what they and found? What? Sub-Q, same dose. So I don't remember what the dose was per week, but it was the same amount. Um, the sub Q was more frequent though, because you can't do, you know, a full CC. Yeah, you can't CC. do a full CC right. under your, like your... No. You so have what, a big old bubble. Yeah. So what they would do mm. is do like a quarter CC four times or half a CC, half a CC or whatever. You split it up. Split it up. 14% higher testosterone with the sub Q, 41% lower hematocrit. So that's one of the issues with raising testosterone and taking uh, hormone therapy in men is it can raise hematocrit to, to potentially later on dangerous levels in some men. So men have to give blood in order to balance that out. It lowered some of those negative side, lower estrogen too. Now I would lower estrogen conversion. Okay, yeah, wow. but both those I would theorize because you are giving the body smaller doses over time versus a big hard dose. No, you if you can look for at, sure that's why the estrogen goes. Like you that. can look at the comparison. So they've done studies on um, long acting testosterone, like sipionate or whatever, and they've had studies where people take several several doses, small doses versus one dose, really no difference. Uh, the difference is, uh, the peaks aren't as high, right? But it's no difference on, on everything else. The sub Q was the one that showed the difference. 14% higher testosterone and lower conversion to estrogen. And I think it's because it's absorbed a little bit better. So are you really taking it sub Q now? I have not tried it yet. Hmm. I'm scared to, to it's oil. Yeah. I feel we, like that'll be weird. I feel like it's going to have a really hard time going through. It'll take the, you like huh. 10 minutes to push it through. It's like, already takes forever in the 23 gauge or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I so. can't imagine how long it's going to take in that. I don't know. I'm going to talk to. Sounds like it'd be a lot of work. I'm going to talk to Dr. Todd and see what, you know, he recommends. That would be an interesting try. question for them. Yeah. Plus Based less pain, study. less painful. Yeah. 
less damage. You know, this is a question I asked them uh, a while ago. By the way, if you have any questions about hormone uh, and hormone therapy, you can go to mphormones.com or we have that hormone uh, forum on Facebook, which is uh, Mind Pump uh, Hormones, I think it's called. Um, I asked them about repeated intramuscular injections and I said, what about scar tissue over time? Because mm -hmm. if I do this for the, for the rest of my life, right. am I going to get gnarly scar tissue? And he's like, well, you got to rotate sites and do this and that. But nonetheless, it's still a risk. Sub-Q, you wouldn't have that risk. You you wouldn't have the risk of developing, you know, scar tissue. So, huh. Interesting, right? Yeah, no, really interesting. Yeah, so. But I can't, I can't imagine pushing it through that small of a needle, like how, how, how hard that's got to be. I, yeah, some people were saying you warm it up under, you know, in the oh my God. in the syringe under hot water. I mean, and then, what a what a what a! I mean, I'm always trying to make it as easy as possible and as little. Sure. I like I want to inject as little times as I have to. Sure. So I mean, to get 14 more percent, but then okay, I gotta I gotta heat it under a fire like heroin. No, not a I fire. Do <laughs> <laughs> no. And fucking drip it to myself over fucking no, no. a spoon. Adam's got a spoon. He's like. <laughs> Don't Main mind me, line. just uh, taking my TRT over no, here. No, 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 no. You got a rubber band. Well, anyway, I saw people in uh, in the forum on oh Facebook God. talking about it who are who already do it this way. And they said oh, they, really? They said they love it. Oh, interesting. They said it's way less painful, super easy. They feel better. Oh, okay. So we, already gonna, have, we already have people doing it. Yeah. Then, huh? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to, again, I'm going to talk to Dr. Todd over there. And, well, I'll, and, I'll try almost anything once. So. And ask him, almost? <laughs> <laughs> almost. That's, that's it. That's almost, almost anything. Speaking of studies, very interesting study. Um, we've talked about the long-term antidepressant effects of exercise. <clears throat> so studies will show that um, exercise will has uh, very similar effects to um, antidepressants uh, in, in terms of treating you know, moderate to low levels of depression and anxiety, the most common forms. And it's, it's almost identical. Now, over time, you actually start to see that exercise probably does better because obviously there's no down regulation of receptors. Um, you get other benefits of exercise, which can lead to better quality of life that probably contribute to that. Nonetheless, this was a study on short-term depression and anxiety effects. Hmm. And they found that a good workout had acute uh, effects on depression and anxiety that lasted several hours afterwards. So as a short-term uh, treatment, which I know we've Is all it a cortisol this. spike? No, I, I think what's it's- What's your thoughts on that? Is it like something to do more of, with like dopamine and uh, yeah, you I know, would, I would some think of those so. chemicals? You know, I noticed this with the trigger sessions for MAPS Anabolic. Mm. Like it's low intensity. It's not really, and I would just do like 10 minutes. And I noticed I'd have this kind of uplifted feeling that would last yeah. for like an hour. You know, that's the most common thing I actually get is feedback and and what I use as a selling point more. Like I know initially, like when you, when you kind of did the the- homework on it and and designed it like it was really around to accelerate building muscle right mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the way we pitch it but actually what i find works best is that to as an energy boost oh it's like yeah. a mood elevator it is yeah and i and i think that i think people can get like they're better at getting because the, the building muscle part takes t so much time but if you can yeah. sell them on the immediate result that you get from it, which is watch, you know, I bet if you're on the couch, you're feeling lethargic, get up, do some band stuff for literally like five to 10 minutes That's and, it. and watch how amazing you well, actually You know feel. that stark contrast between when you've been sitting in a position for so long and, and you're sort of forming into this like, you know, really hunched over position, how awful that feels yeah. and, and like how it actually then affects your mood. And then the tightness as a result of that. And it's sort of this like spiraling well, effect. The inside of you influences the outside of you, but the outside of you also influences the inside of you. So what I mean by that is you feel uh, sad or anxious on the inside. So your body starts to act sad and anxious. Mm -hmm. But on the other end of the spectrum, if I move my body in a way that uh, would would tell the inside of me that I'm not as sad as I as I as I as I think I feel, like let me move, mm -hmm. let me stretch, let me get some sunlight, let me give someone a hug, right, something like that, that the inside of me gets that signal and says, oh, we're not feeling as bad, or we shouldn't feel this bad, or or we actually feel a little better. It's like those studies on on posture. Yes, I've always tripped out on those. Yeah, those, those power poses, like really that open posture. Mm -hmm is uh, just so much more beneficial. Yeah. So hey. along these lines, uh, also some more interesting stuff. I was reading about the activity um, habits of modern hunter-gatherers. Um, and you guys know that study. I always talk about the Hadza tribe in northern mm -hmm. Tanzania mm -hmm. and how they found that they're, they really didn't burn more calories than the average person because the body adapts to activity and all that stuff. But I was also, I was digging a little deeper and studies on uh, hunter-gatherers, which is how we evolved, shows that they spend a significant amount of time 
uh, doing nothing. Now, I don't mean they're doing like they're 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 hanging out and hang, but they're literally nothing, just sitting there and just pondering or hanging out. Hmm. And then I thought to myself, we never do nothing. Never. Like when you're sitting quietly. Oh, well, we you're back in the day. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I think we've we've just found ways to um, just flood our normal times like you're standing in line you're yeah. you're sitting there you're going to the bathroom even like there's just you bring in a phone and a screen with you have and you, it's just interrupting a lot have you guys ever paid attention to like how weird you feel when you forget those few times in a million times like like in a line or going yes. to the bathroom like how oh my god yeah like I, there's been I've, I I've actually i've actually pulled an asshole move like this where literally i like I'm getting ready to go to the restroom. I have to really go to the restroom. And because I realize I don't have my phone, like I go find it so I can come back <laughs> to the restroom and go back. It's like, whoa. And I don't, I do it subconsciously. It's not like I'm like acting like, oh, I need to have my phone. It's just like, it's, it's become yeah, second. I can't just sit here. Yeah. Cause right? that's not productive. And it's, and when it's the, not productive when you're on your phone either. What are you doing? And the few times that I do, it's like, wow, that's wild. That, that is something that is just, radically changed in our lives that we have just now adopted and are used to radically. So I, I right now, so ever since we had the episode with Dr. Cabral and he talked about, you know, how we had mercury and, and he's like, Oh, you know, sauna is good for that and other stuff. So what I did is I got myself a membership, uh, over at club sport. Right. And they have a sauna and a steam room and I can't take my phone and the sauna, it'll, it'll stop working. It's not going to work. And it's definitely not the it'll steam melt. room. Yeah. So I go in there for 25 minutes, maybe. Okay. So I'm saying 25 is nothing. And the first couple of times I didn't have my phone. I remember I was just sitting there and I'm like, do I just go to sleep? Like, do I take a nap? Shoot. Like, what do I do? But now <laughs> after I've been doing it for about a week consistently, I value sitting there and doing nothing. And it's yeah. really nice. It's yeah. really weird. Isn't it almost like it, you need that time to kind of make sense of what you've been experiencing? It, like it, you can you can sort of like put pieces together and totally. you just need to ponder. We don't ponder enough anymore. No. It's the circling back to how we started this conversation, the creating space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're creating space for that for sure. You know, I wanted to talk to you guys about because of uh, everything that's going on in the economy right now with like inflation and real estate and you know for the audience like we've openly shared about like the stuff that we do with properties and we've put a, a pretty good halt for a couple months now i don't think we've made it right we haven't made any major investments in the in mm -hmm. the last couple months because i think for the first time we're probably all in agreement on that the correction is around the corner like what do you think is going to happen over yeah the they're, they're talking about the uh the what's it called bond yield curve is inverted right now and I believe, and I heard this on the All In podcast, yeah. and they said that when it's this way, and I think it has to stay this way nine days in a row, but if it does, uh, two thirds of the time, it accurately predicts a, recess a recession within, the, within that year. 93% hmm. of the time, it predicts a recession within two years. Yeah. Now, so, and now there's that, and there's all these other factors. So we're probably looking at a recession uh, of some sort coming up in the next year or two. Yeah. is what it looks like. I so. think so. I think October, I think we're going to see. That's my prediction is that, and if we don't see the recession in uh, October, we'll see the beginning of the correction. So I think that, and I don't, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to feel anything like 08. Um, I don't think it's going to be like that. Um, I don't think we're going to see that big of a flood of properties at the market or that many people for clothes. Like, I don't see it uh, happening. Though. I definitely see a correction, though. I think it's inevitable. You know what the you know what the the challenge I have with that because I agree with that. Then this is what I think: every other recession, we've always had um, the ability to uh, uh, increase the money supply, mm -hmm. to loosen up the money supply, lower interest rates, and that's always been our remedy to kind of you know what do they say stimulate the economy. We're we're stuck. We can't do that. We've already printed We've given out so much money. Ten trillion dollars. Interest rates are higher than they were We've before. Used that button too many times. Yeah, like and inflation is part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, but I actually believe that that's they will. Okay, so we know the Fed came out. It looks like they're going to move. Uh, you know, twenty five to fifty basis points every quarter or so. Mm -hmm. That's the, what the prediction is now. If we start to go into a tailspin, and I think that we start to really start to plummet, I actually think they'll go back on that. I mean, how many times have the Fed said they're going to do something and then they don't do it? Or they, yeah, but what about inflation? Still, they, but to, to tamp it down a little bit and to slow it down, what they'll do is they'll ease it again. So we're going to creep up to, I don't even know where the rates are now. Let's say it's around 4%. I think the, it is around 4 by, by the end of the year, we're looking at 45 to 5%, which is still a decent interest rate, but it's not rock bottom. No. And I think if all of a sudden it starts getting a little out of control, like you're saying might happen, 
I think they'll just go, okay, drop it back down again. They do that, it'll it'll stimulate the economy again and more investors will go back in and buy it. It's again. a weird situation yeah. to be in because almost every other time when this has happened, there's been a job shortage. But we actually have like I think 10 million open like jobs, uh, like the companies are trying to hire and people don't want to work. So it's a really weird- yeah, It's a weird predicament. Very strange uh, time. So I don't know. I don't know what's, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, and it, it, what's, where are we at? Because you follow the, the politics more. Where are we at with actually printing more again? I thought I heard another stimulus was coming. Is that That's true, the thing. Or? It's like the, it's the button that they like to push. I, and and the public is not aware of the the damaging effects of inflation until it gets to the point where everybody's really screwed. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it, people are confused by what causes inflation. So and they're already trying to blame it on the the situation with you know Russia and Ukraine. Well, you were telling me about the Russian currency. Uh, what what what's happening with that? He tied his the ruble to gold and only allowed certain countries to purchase their oil with the ruble, and the ruble recovered immediately. Went right back to where it was before all the sanctions. I don't know where it's at today, but that was like a- Well, like I mean, that's- ago. So that's- Crazy. Doug over here is like, you know, Mr. Silver and Gold, right? So he's always trying to push me into <clears throat> buying buying silver and gold, and that is what would happen if the, the dollar started, because the prediction is- by the, Gold crushes. Oh, yeah, by the people that are going to- Tying it back to the gold is, standard. Yeah, to, if, if it were to go crazy, right, and collapse or be- uh, something that was that we've you know, unprecedented happen that that's a way to hedge, you know. But speaking of like hedging, uh, I think you win in the last couple of years as far as the best investment. I, would, I don't know if you told this guy yet already, but oh, you do? Palm yeah. Desert is oh, yeah, crushing. Is crushing it, dude. Yeah, we um, and, and the thing was like we got into it because my sister in law was um, already there and we looked at this place and it just made a lot of sense because. It was interesting because there's a certain market that comes from Canada and from like cold places, like for, for the desert climate. Uh. And so they plan out, they're very like planned out and they, they'll, so like our whole year next year is even already booked up. Wow. It has a waiting list uh, for this small condo. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, our profits, uh, have been, have been great. That's awesome. I used to, I used to live in Palm desert. It very, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting town. It's interesting cause it's in the winter. It's like so many people, so much stuff's happening in the summer. Half of the people are gone. It's really weird. Now share Justin with me. Cause obviously we're, we're also, all of us are getting ready to move into some more short term and you have now the most experience in it. What has it been like with tenants and stuff like that? <laughs> been really interesting. Very oh, really? Yeah. So th there's a few things and it's, it's helped us to tighten up a lot of, um, basically like, uh, expectations and like, uh, add certain things of, of, of kind of getting ahead of, of like a lot of their and needs stuff? and amenities okay. and just like, um, cause you get an older clientele. A lot of times you have to really walk people through things. There's like, a lot of the questions. TV? Yes. <laughs> so hard. All those things. I swear to <laughs> God, things you would never even think of. Like they, they'll call or text or like email. Yeah. And it's like, so we had to start putting barriers there and like adding more information, uh, that was readily available or just fixing things preemptively, uh, before they got there. But I mean, there's some unexpected things like, for instance, I had the notes even, we had uh, a situation where the cleaners got there and uh, the, the tenants had peed the bed. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> Thankfully, we have like a cover over the mattress, but like, who does that? That's either like, that's either a bad time or a good time. Only two, <laughs> yeah, only two I was gonna say like either this is a thing or it's like you know whoopsie poopsie. It just you know happened. And wow. uh, but if you think that happens, don't you just like yourself go put it into the laundry and so people don't have to clean. Did up you guys ever you. growing up? Did you guys ever have a, a a friend that was like the drunk peer? Did you have that? No, I had, I've, I've had two. Isn't that what? crazy? Two friends that were drunk peers. Oh, wow. actually I and did. And one time I was in the bed with him. It was a fucking, no. wait, wait, he peed in bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was wait, three of us. We were, we were, we were partying. Oh, it was okay. a party. It was like, Whoa. it was this way. He said, throw parties at my cousin's house. And he, he, how funny is this? We used to throw parties in a, in a double wide trailer that were like, you know, hundred, 200 people deep. And oh my God. Yeah. But I mean, not obviously you couldn't right, even fit a hundred, two hundred. He was a property. It had like two, three acres and yeah. it was fenced. And so that's, we could do it because it was fenced in or it had a gate uh, entrance. And so we could keep the cops from coming in and it was big enough so we could be loud and shit and you could have kegs and be messy and stuff. Uh, but anyways, it was always like a fight for the the couch. The, There's only a few places mm -hmm. to like sleep and you know, I remember spending the night one night and it's, I think there was three or four of us like lined up on the bed and I woke up fucking drenched. Oh. I thought it was sweat. 
originally. I thought I was oh, like, man. man, it was so hot and sweaty. <laughs> and then I, and I, then, it? I then I feel, yeah, I feel the side of the bed and see how soaked it is. Who had asparagus? <laughs> bro, how do you, how yeah. do you forgive somebody? Oh, never, bro. On me, bro. Have, we were not friends after that. Yeah, I was I have, like, you pee on me one time, we're not friends. Dude. That's after, that's it. That's the end of our, I, our, our friendship. And then I found done. another friend like this that I uh, was in when I was in my 20s. I, I just moved to the Bay Area. It was a trainer I worked with, so I won't sell him out. Um, <laughs> you usually do though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you usually say the name. It's, it's, I do. It out. Maybe I will. I'm also Robert. naming names. So real quick. we were, we went, uh, we went. I took, I, I took him back to a house party. Uh, my buddy Justin, you guys know him. We went to uh, his place, and he had never even met this guy before. We threw this huge house party, and he spent the night in his bedroom. And the next morning, like he didn't even. What was fucked up was he didn't even say nothing. It was like after everybody had left. And we're like cleaning house, and then we check the bed, and the bed's got this massive. Oh my god! Like, like you're not bro. gonna find it. Yeah, you're twenty something year old. You're pissed clean, it, and you dude. don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. how do you not? I, so, I, that's the part that doesn't. I don't doesn't register to me. I had a buddy. I went to Vegas. It's like and, maybe they won't know. In the, <laughs> no, I went to Vegas with maybe my buddy. Just put something on top of it. In yeah. the middle of the night, I hear like water running and hitting like the floor. And I'm like, what? It's like, oh no, is there a leak or something? Turn the light on, and he's like, uh, drunk, half asleep, and he's just peeing, he's just peeing in the corner, on the floor. Yeah, that's the only time I, I had that happen too. Wow. We were we were in high school when that happened, and I'm sleeping on the couch, like literally just like this. There's a coffee table right here, mm -hmm. and I and imagine a couch laying there, and I woke up to pee splashing on my face, oh! and my boy was sleepwalking, peeing on the table, and he's peeing on the table. Thought it was the bathroom. And I remember getting up, screaming, yelling, and it didn't even, like, I had to go over and shake him to, like, wake him up. <laughs> you had to shake him afterwards? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gotta finish, you, buddy. You, you. Go back to bed. Right. Right. You know what? I yeah. didn't even think about Slip how many times I've been peed on. I've been anyway, on Adam, I want to like. I wanna tell you, because I brought yeah. these up and you were asking about it. These are the meta pants from your- from Oh. Your, see, look. So they're not, okay, so what's, they're meta what? Yeah, but meta, who, who wears them better, dude? Yeah, yeah look at, yeah. come on. Oh, you, you, you both are. Stop. Don't do the glutes. I can't. I can't. There's okay. No. Okay. So these are. So I'm wearing. Nice stretchy. I'm actually wearing. They the, look nice. I can, I'm wearing right now the Meta joggers. So okay. These so the are joggers the, are different because they're tapered. Of course. At the bottom. Yeah. These so, look like slacks. But they're called Meta what then? They're, they're meta, meta pants. Yeah. They're just Meta pants. Yeah. Just meta pants. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Is that right, Doug? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. But so. they look like slacks. They look nice. Yeah. So you can work out on if you want. I don't work out in these though. But I'll, if I go out to dinner or whatever, put a nice shirt on. They look great. You know. Yeah. And they're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. No. Interesting. And stretchy. Look at this. I mean, they fit Justin for God's sake. Uh, you no, know, yeah. I like. I really like the gray ones. Busting right there. them out. Now, are those the ones you've always worn, or did you just start wearing those too? Oh, I started wearing them. Yeah, a couple months ago, like two months ago. I just reordered again. I still, I'm waiting for the. I think it's the Eco, the Eco or Echo uh, line that they have. They have the vest, and they got this. What's uh, the one? It's like vital. It, it, it's like. Um, it's basically um, like sweatshirt material, kind of like so. The sweat those pants? shorts, yes, yes. Uh, so it's short season, you guys. Like, I ordered the same coming, ones. Dude. No, I ordered the same ones as you I'm did. Working I, on I, my saw, I saw your list. I'm yeah. getting ready. And uh, Katrina's like, "Oh, look at these shorts that Justin got. You should get those." And I I'm love like, oh. shorts, man. I can't wait. They oh. look like they're like a, th a thick sweat material. I don't. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything look, of theirs. Like, like, so I like the. So I obviously like their their comfortable stuff like that. But I like going, they have a whole section of like nicer looking like polo button down flannels. Like, love it. I yeah, love it. That's yeah. what, so I've, been, I've just been scooping up a bunch of stuff. I mean, that's my favorite thing, though, is you can dress it up or down. Like, you really can. Like, I, I could throw a polo. Even when these joggers, I could throw a polo mm -hmm. on it. So are you guys so seeing- Where are we at now, like, like percentage-wise of your wardrobe? I feel like I'm all, I'm up to, like, almost half, you know, oh, like, close to yeah. That's all I wear. Yeah, no, I would, I, would, I would say real close to that, if not more. It's getting up there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the show. Check this out. Look, if you eat a lot of protein- if you eat a diet to bulk, or if you're just trying to get lean, sometimes your diet can make you feel bloated. You can get digestive issues. Uh, you want to fix that? Try digestive enzymes, but not just any digestive enzymes. Go to a company that works with fitness professionals. Buy Optimizers. It's the only digestive enzyme company that we work with. It made a huge difference on my digestion. And what it does is it allows my body to assimilate more of these nutrients. That means more protein is going to my muscle. I'm getting more energy from my carbohydrates. I don't feel bogged down or bloated. Very inexpensive, very effective, okay? So if you want to see if it can affect your digestive issues in a positive way, which it likely will, go to mindpumppartners.com and click on buy optimizers and then use the code mindpump10 for a massive discount. Here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Shannon from Texas. Hey, Shannon. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, just want to say thanks for taking my call um, and the guidance and help you guys give to others. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so my question, 
a little background on me. I'm 34. I'm a nurse. So I work uh, shift work 12 hours, three days a week. I work out regularly, um, but I'm the cardio hit cortisol junkie you guys talk about from time to time. Um, I do hit like six days a week and then I'll add on a little extra running and some strength training on top of it. Um, yes. And then before, usually before my work shifts, I'll wake up at like three forty-five in the morning. I'll go work out. Then I'll go to work. And then on my days off, it's a little more chill, but, um, during COVID lockdown, I was living in LA and I got really into running and used working out and kind of like nutrition control to kind of let my stress out. So I got into some unhealthy patterns and I've pretty much crashed my metabolism. Um, And now I'm to the point where I ran a full marathon in December. And ever since then, I feel like I've fallen into this really bad trap of appetite cravings all over the place. My emotions are all over the place as well. I have cravings. I'm living on caffeine. Um, I, I've gone to the point where I feel like I work out too much and I eat pretty healthy, but I feel so unhealthy and I know I'm in a bad place, but like, where do I even begin to wean off this hit cardio thing to get into a more balanced way of working out and feeling like I'm getting in better shape and losing some body fat and just feeling better overall. Shannon, Mm. first off, I want to say, um, I want to tell you how much I appreciate yeah. you being very honest. Yeah, great self awareness. Yeah. Um, that's the first step, by the way. You know, that's the hardest step. The I'm hardest glad you step it. is to say oh, this is an issue. I have a, I have an issue here, and I think I need to address it. I don't know how, but I know I have um, an issue. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you, and I think you already realize this. That's what it sounds like. I've been working out for a long time. Um, if I did what you are doing, it would destroy me. If I, I don't know anybody that could do what you're doing. In terms of your shift work, waking up at three forty-five, six days a week a hit, plus running, plus resistance. I don't know anybody that could be able to do that <clears throat> for any length of period of time without um, completely destroying themselves. So, do you? How frank do you want me to be with this? With this? With my advice? Go for it. <laughs> okay. So you 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 have an addiction um, to exercise, um, and it's coming from something else. Okay. So exercise, like anything, can be abused. <clears throat> And you're, you've developed an abusive relationship with it. So there's something that you're distracting yourself from or something you're running from. Um, and you don't have to tell me what that is, but when you, the reason why this is important is because as we scale this back, which is what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to really scale this back. Whatever it is that is driving you to run away from it or distract yourself is not going to be gone. It's going to, in fact, it's going to be, it's going to surface itself even more and you need to be prepared for that. Okay. So Mm -hmm. consider that. Number two, um, I know you said your goal is, you know, better fitness and all that stuff. We got to put that on the side burner for now. What we need to look at is health, better health. Now, what does that mean? You feel healthy. You feel good. You feel happy. You've got good sleep. You feel balanced. You don't feel the way that you do now. You feel very balanced. That's what we got to aim for first before we could ever think about performance or body fat goals. Those will follow if we if we go after being healthy. If we go after the 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 strength and the fat loss and the mirror, you're not going to leave this hamster wheel of of destruction. And I'm going to I'm going to not to scare you, okay, but this is going to be this is going to be again some honesty. However bad you feel now, it's going to get much worse if you don't jump off this hamster wheel. It's going to get much, much worse, and a lot of damage can happen. So the first step one is you really got to back off, really back off. I would take what you're doing now, and I would cut it down to two days a week of strength training, and all the other activity would be walking. That's the first thing I would do. I would have you do um, prioritize your sleep, and you need to have – um, a strategy to deal with whatever it is that's driving you to abuse exercise the way that you are. 
Now, one way to do it, which is, you know, I guess the most organized way would be to work with a professional, a therapist once a week. And what that's going to do is help you reveal yourself to yourself and just kind of stay on track. You can do that. The other thing would be to adopt some type of a practice, maybe a spiritual practice, meditations practice, something that's going to help you deal with the feelings and emotions that are going to come up when you give up your favorite drug, which at the moment is exercise. Mm -hmm. Shannon, sometimes Sal says pretty much everything that needs to be said. I mean, I, I honestly don't have much to contribute other than, are you aware of what the thing is? You know, it's normally relationship, work, uh, something like that. Is Are you aware of the thing that you're currently running from right now? Yeah. Okay. And I've started seeing someone to work through the mental piece of this. Beautiful. So that has been helpful. Um, I think a lot of it has been work stress, especially over the last couple of years. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Like I, I would say uh, being a nurse, what kind of nurse are you? Where, where do you, what kind of uh, nurse are you? What do you work with? Um, right now I'm working with, uh, neuro patients. Mm. Um, but like when COVID first hit, I was working in ICU Oh yeah. travel contract. I was in California, took a travel contract and now I'm out in Texas. So, oh. um, well, kind of like crazy. And so it's like, I've been seeing working out as like my stress relief, but yeah. it seems to be adding more stress. <laughs> do, you, do you know where, do you know where your calories are currently right now by chance? Um, I don't track every day. I would say when I do track, it could be anywhere from, <laughs> this is really bad, uh, like 1,200 to 1,500, 1,600. Yeah. You're, uh, so look, you've done, and I, I, I want to commend you, you've done an amazing job taking care of other people. It's time to take care of yourself. You're not going to be able, it's, I, I'm going to make, I'm going to guess something here that you're very driven to care for other people. You can't do that effectively, though, if you're broken. Right. So, yeah. so you've already sacrificed your health, and I appreciate the sacrifice you've made. I know, I'm sure you've helped a lot of people. Now you need to take care of you, and that means really paying attention to what's going on. So, um, I'm glad you're working with someone. That's a very that's a that's oh, a, that's the biggest step. That's going to mm -hmm. be the biggest step. Yeah, yeah. And and now you got to focus on health and in. Take your eyes off aesthetics. Take your eyes off of anything that could drive you in the opposite direction. Your body's going to start to change. You're going to start to feel different. Don't freak out over it. Your body's going to be healing. Here's the good news, Shannon. At, at the end of this, you're going to be so much better than you ever were before. Stronger, fitter, faster, but you're going to mentally be much better. So the the other end of this is going to be really amazing. Okay, you just got to go through the tough part. So now, let's which is giving let's, up that drug. Let's uh, let's be a little more prescriptive, like what this yeah. looks like as far as programming. Like so, I, I th my right. thought is maps anabolic totally. because she is at a place where she's doing so much training to try and cut her all the way to three days a week and say stay there would be tough. Right. So I, what I would encourage is that when you get that urge that you got to go do something is to go for a walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is to go for okay. a, a walk or a, an easy hike, not a hard, crazy, intense hike, but you can go hike, go hike out, outdoors, get outdoors, and it's fine. Do it for an hour. Do it two hours is even fine. Just don't do something super intense. It's not a workout, yes. in other words. Yeah, and you know, be, be with yourself and have or with company and have a good time or whatever like that, but train, follow MAPS Anabolic to a T, how it's laid out. Do the trigger sessions on the off days. If you have that urge to go do more, go for a nice walk. And that's kind of where I would start you. I wouldn't mess with your calories at all because you're you're already low enough that um and I and I know that I can't really increase you quite yet because we're about to pull back on all your calorie burn. So I'd, uh -huh. I'd, I'd want to start you there exercise wise and just really focus on getting strong when we're in the gym. And when we want to move more, we go for a nice walk. Yeah. Is that the biggest sort of reserve you have in terms of being able to scale out of all of this, um, you know, working out that you're doing is just not having something to do. Is that what you're, you're afraid of the most? Yeah. I, cause on days when I do like, give myself a break. I don't work out. I feel so sluggish yeah. and like mm -hmm. terrible. So like I've thought about just going down to like three days a week, but I know then the other four days a week, I'm just going to feel like crap. Yeah. Mm. No, that's I'm such a good qu question, Justin. So does it, you don't have to do nothing. Yeah. Although I think nothing is great, but you can do something, just do something appropriate. Like 
Yin yoga would be amazing for you, Shannon. Yin yoga is a restorative. It's slow. You're sitting there. You're not like beating the crap out of yourself. Not power yoga, not hot yoga, uh, just yin yoga. Literally, if you want to sign up for something, find yin yoga. You could do meditation. You could... You can enlist the help of a friend and say, hey, you know, I'd like to go for walks at this time of the day, but make it about the relationship with your friend, not the workout itself. Like you can do stuff, just don't work out all the time, but you can definitely do things. So if you thrive off of schedule and, and that kind of, that's okay, just do things that are more appropriate. Eventually though, you're going to want to do some nothing though. That There's a lot of value in and doing nothing as well. Um, and part of that is dealing with, cause here's what happens with bad feelings. You don't deal with them. They don't go mm -hmm. away. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they, they actually, they get louder and they turn into other things so that you finally start to listen. So, um, but I, I tell you what, the fact that you called a show like ours and told us on <laughs> air, yeah, that is a huge step. Yeah. You're that's the hardest step. That's it. Everything else is, is, is work. But what you just did was was tremendous. So I want you to pat yourself on the back. And what I want you to do, Shannon, is take care of yourself like you do your patients. As much as you care about your patients, <laughs> I want you to start to do that for yourself. So every time you start to feel that feeling of, I got to do more, I got to beat myself up. Okay, hold on a second. If I was taking care of myself in the ICU or in the hospital, what would I do? What would I say to myself? What kind of advice would I give myself? What kind of things would I... Tell myself, and then listen to your own advice because you probably have pretty good can advice. We, can we get her in the forum too? Yeah, good let's, idea. Let's let's get you in the forum so that we can stay in touch. This, I definitely want you to reach out to us in the forum. Just tag uh, one or all of us so we can kind of keep an eye on you over the course because this is this is a slow process. This is not a you know, turn the light switch on or off type of deal. Mm -hmm. So as as you're going through it, hopefully we can be there to help uh, support you through it. Yeah, and, and consider any. Any, any type of an addictive uh, behavior, there's always a withdrawal when you come out of it. So expect it. Don't, don't be surprised by it. Don't be like, oh my God, just like, okay, this is going to suck. Let's do this. Like expect that there's going to be some challenges there um, as you go through. But the other end of it is going to be amazing. I promise you. I've worked with people like you. and uh -huh. uh, Very the, common. Actually. Oh, and the other end of it is like, oh, it's another level. It's another, it's some, it's, it's a whole nother level. So there's a there's a good ending good ending to the story. You just gotta and you are you're 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 working with someone. You you called mm -hmm. us. You told us. So I think I think you have a very good chance of succeeding. Okay, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. No problem. We're gonna mm -hmm. send uh, anabolic and then free access to the forum. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Chad. Man, that is, uh, you know, I know what that feels like to be so addicted to exercise yeah. and to be afraid to come Bro, out this of is, it. This is this is. Super common, very common, and it's it's also too why we we get a little bit of flack for being so hard on the orange theories and the crossfits, and this is why they're the cocaine yeah. dealers. This is, is. This. <laughs> they are. I mean, if you want to look at it, like it's that. true. They who yeah, do they attract? Yeah. They, they attract the the exercise it's addicts. Very similar. Yes, you know. totally. And that's and that and I just want the audience to understand that that that's that's the place that we're coming from when we talk about those things. It's not that I don't think that. CrossFit is awesome. It's not that I don't think that there's people that do thrive and do well in 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 formats like Orange Theory and F45. There, there is a there is a person for that. I just think there's a lot of the wrong people yeah. are attracted to that, and it, and it tends to attract those specific people that shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And this is really common. I I would half my clients I'd say battle with someone like yeah. this. Oh yeah. yeah, always talking somebody down from. Yeah, this is the majority of my clients uh, towards the end of my career is because you know people get so driven and um, you do get that feeling of uh, you know it, it provides you with that like de stressing temporarily and so it's like it becomes part of your ritual and then you know it just before you know it you're doing so much. There, you, how did I get? Here? We've also oversimplified uh, losing weight and getting in shape. Yeah. Yeah. We've oversimplified it to just you know what you just need to move more yeah. and eat less. Oh, it stop working, do more, yeah. eat yeah. less, it's keep like, going. You yeah, know? and be the motivation thing. We just double, triple down on yeah. the hype and motivation and oversimplify how how challenging this can be. You know. Yeah. No, you're right, hundred percent. And um, it's it, this is a great example of how. Because you said stress relief, like real stress relief is improving your health, improving your body's ability and your mind's ability to handle mm -hmm. stress and to deal with it. What's actually happening here 
is it probably started from actual stress relief and then it turned into stress avoidance, Ooh. which means that the stress is not going away. The challenge, the problems aren't and going so away. It's compiling, and they now. and it compile, and then this becomes a stress. Yep. So she's actually added stress on top of stress, but because she's valuing avoidance, and that only lasts so long. You know what, Sal? We didn't get a chance to. Um address like supplements but here's a case where you uh, you might recommend what are some things ashwagandha that, yeah Rishri? just oh, yeah. ashwagandha Rishri. or is there anything else that you would use i would go adaptogens yeah i would go ashwagandha and then rhodiola in place of caffeine i'm glad you asked that hope you're listening shannon um ashwagandha would probably be beneficial for you to help your body handle its cortisol uh <laughs> more efficiently and then rhodiola uh in place of some of your caffeine that'll give you some energy it's more of an adaptogen it's not as strong, nearly as strong as caffeine, but it'll help take the edge off because going off caffeine can be, or going dropping caffeine can feel real nasty. Our next caller is Angie from Washington. Hey, Angie, how can we help you? Hi. Um, I have to admit my 21-year-old son was pretty disappointed I wasn't going to be talking to Robert Oberst. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he is awesome. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't know I was going to be live. Sorry, I'm not used to this. No worries. Oh, it's recorded. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Don't don't think of it it's as like live. it's like a few million people. Yeah, yeah. It's not a big yeah, deal. Not, no, no <laughs> big deal. <laughs> Everybody in the world. People. No big kind deal. Of. <laughs> well, I must up front say that I did purchase the uh, starter program um, because I wasn't sure which one to start with, but um, I had read some things and I saw the podcast on adrenal fatigue. And, um, so that's why I was looking at the programs and trying to decide which one was going to be the best one for me. Okay. That it, probably is. is Tell it, us a little bit more about your goals and, and wh yeah, where what's your training history and, and you're like, what, do you, what have you been um, doing up to now? I have probably been weight training on and off for about 24 years. Um, but now I'm 46 and, um, life is changing for me. I have a lot of digestive issues that I'm working on to heal. Um, I just want to keep the muscle mass that I do have because I know that you lose muscle mass as you get older. Okay. okay. Angie, you said on and off for, for over two decades, but have you been leading up to now, were you consistent with strength training or resistance training for a year or did you, did you, are you starting now from a layoff? I'm starting now from a layoff. Okay. I, it, I did a program for about six, seven months, but after that, I felt completely wiped out and drained that I quit and I just couldn't continue. Yeah. Map starter. You, you, you made the right choice. I would start with map starter and you said you're working on your, your digestive issues. Are you working with a professional on that or just on your own? I'm working with a professional on that. Oh, good. Okay. You're, great. Yeah. You're, you're, you're great. Map starter would be perfect for you. Um, let's drop her in the forum too. Yeah. Look, we're going to let you in our private forum for free Angie. And then if you have questions, you can ask it in the forum. There's a lot of trainers in there and other fitness people. And you can also tag us. Um, if you want us to answer your question, then we'll get to it, you know, when we can, but you're on the right track. Um, as the digestive, as the digestive situation works itself out, you'll find your body's ability to adapt to exercise will improve. And what you're noticing right now is just your, your, everything is too much stress for your body. Digestive issues can mm -hmm. cause that. You mentioned adrenal fatigue. You know, they don't call it that anymore, although the symptoms remain the same. They'll refer to it now as HPA axis dysfunction. So hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenals. And it's basically the relationship between these, the hormones and chemicals that are produced by those things. And they're out of balance, making you feel really bad. You just feel like you have no energy, lots of fatigue. You have hot and cold intolerances. And I'm, you know, I don't need to tell you, you already know these things. So as you solve those issues, your tolerance for exercise and your ability to work out will improve. But map starters right now, based off of what you told me, I think is a perfect place. To Honestly. Go. Yeah. I think too, a lot of people listening, uh, will revert back to when they thought of when they were in shape. Yeah. It's like sort of the first uh, thing that leads them in terms of how they decide to, to go forward with their training. Uh, and so just to commend you on that, to, to think in that regard, there is the optimal dose right now for you. And so this is something too, you can address any instability. You can really kind of build yourself back up and, and, and see great progress, but it might be, you know, a bit less, uh, intense or, you know, the, the focus might be a little different than like what you might've preceded that. So. Yeah. Angie is your, so your son's a, a Robert Oberst fan, huh? 
Yeah, he's watched a lot of the videos of the strongest man and those competitions and stuff online. It's pretty funny. I I showed him that program and he's like, Are you gonna do that program while I'm the strong program? <laughs> no, no, you know what I'm gonna do? Listen to your son. Not right now. A- Angie, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you for free so you can give it to your son, okay? Oh. Map Strong. Oh, it's the, it's a program go. we designed with Robert Oberst. So tell him uh tell him the guys that uh that that Robert Oberst worked with and was very excited to work with yeah. <laughs> created the program with him. Now we're going to give it to you so he can have it. Right. He That's picked awesome. me up and threw me in a pool. So that yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> and, and we couldn't stop him if we tried. No, I couldn't. Yeah. I was, yeah, make I was sure, like a little baby. Make sure you stay in touch with this Angie in the forum. Okay. So let us, let us know as you go through, uh, through the process, we're in, we're in there throughout the day and stuff like that. And, and, and keep us posted in the, the Facebook forum. So yeah. Doug will give you access to that. Yeah. And, and I think you're you're in a good place. You are, and, and normally I would give I would give nutrition advice, but because you're working with someone with, with gut issues, I'm not going to advise you any better. Uh, definitely not any better than the expert you're you're working with. So I would definitely follow their advice, uh, heal your gut, and then from there you're you're going to feel so much better. Yeah, I do like the intuitive eating because you know you know so many programs say eat this, eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that, and I'm like I can't eat any of that yeah. stuff. Mm. So I have to go on my own intuitive eating for my body and figure out what's best for me. Yeah. And, and whatever, whoever you're working with, I'm sure they'll, they'll figure out what the cause is, whether it be SIBO, uh, or yeah, it's, I've got SIBO, I've got SIFO, I've got leaky gut. Oh man. Angie, when all, you, all those, kinds of stuff, those are all fixable. Those are all fixable. Okay. When you fix those, the, it's going to be so different for you. Like everything's going to change. That's how, that's a big deal. So prioritize that above everything else. Well, I have to say that for the last several months, I have not felt like exercising, weight training and that stuff was just the farthest thing from my mind. Yeah. But on Sunday, I was like, hmm, I'm feeling pretty good. I think I can start this. And so I did start the starter program on Monday and Tuesday. And I can tell you that I'm feeling lots better and I don't feel drained. Awesome. Yeah, beautiful. Like I'm moving, moving, making some progress. So Very just- good. You're a smart woman. Yep. Stay on that, stay on that course. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's cool. Her son likes Robert Owen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad she led with that. Yeah, no. <laughs> She's like, yeah. well, what? sorry, we're not. Uh, She's like, who's yeah. on the phone? Uh, uh, anyway, I'll ask you guys a question. Uh, is Hapthor there by <laughs> yeah. chance? Hapthor? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it goes out the list. No, you know what? Uh, when yeah, this, this is a good segue into into gut health. When your gut is, I mean, she, I mean, SIBO, you know, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. She's got candida, probably fungal overgrowth. So this stuff going on with her gut, when your gut is off, you everything's screwed. Yeah. Everything. It messes up your hormones. You're fighting everything from the inside. Oh, my, you're in fl- I know. My gut was off. Like, my, I would lose 10 pounds of, of lean body mass. My I, my hormones would be off. I'd feel irritable and, and terrible. It was just, it's not good. And it wasn't as bad as what she's saying. So if you have gut issues, like you can do everything else and it's not going to work. You got to solve the gut issues before you do anything else. Our next caller is Andrea from Wisconsin. Andrea, how can we help you? Hey guys, this is awesome. Thank you so much for having me on here. Thanks for coming on. Um, Yeah. So I'll just hop into it. Um, I've run a couple of your programs and I'm finishing up running aesthetics for the second time. I've gotten some good results and I'm having a lot of fun with your programs. And next I'd like to try out split. Um, I've done split routines in the past, um, but it's been a little while, so I just kind of like to switch it up a little bit. Um, I'm feeling like I'm also able to stay really consistent lately. Um, All of that said, I do have a couple of things that are holding me back from pulling the trigger on split, so I'm hoping that you'd be able to answer these uh, couple questions. Um, So my first one is I heard that split is set up as a push-pull legs program. Um, I think that's right. (laughs) Um, So I'm really liked upper and lower splits in the past because I get more frequency, um, particularly with my lower body, since that's an area I'd really like to develop. Um, So hitting legs just twice a week in this program seems a little bit light. Uh, You guys always talk about how important frequency is, but, you know, I'm sure that there is a good reason why you designed this program this way. So are push-pull legs routine um, much more effective than upper and lower splits? Yeah, good question. Um, The the answer is yes and no. So it depends. Yeah. So Studies show that the optimal frequency for training uh, body parts is anywhere between two to four days a week. So it's a pretty big range, right? Like, okay, which one is which? Well, volume matters probably most in that. So if you do 20 sets for legs over two workouts or 20 sets for legs over four workouts, 
well, which one's going to work better for me? Eh, probably the one that's more novel, I would say, for your body. Uh, the one that allows you to do the exercises that are going to be most valuable for your body at that moment. But I do want to, I do want to divert, just kind of take a left here and ask you some more questions. So what made you start with aesthetic and do that twice? Um, and why do you want to go to split? And then how does your body feel? Are you noticing any joint issues, any pains, aches? Like, let's talk about that first, because there may be a better program for you. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, so I started with aesthetic because uh, I just, that was kind of most aligned with my goals. Um, I ran it twice just because I really enjoyed it the first time around and just wanted to run it again, um, maybe make a few modifications uh, based on how I felt the first time. Um, I'm feeling really good on it. I'm, um, not really having too much joint pain or anything um, and feeling good energy and getting a lot of progress on t as terms of um, how much weight I'm able to lift. So feeling really good about it so okay. far. So strength gains were pretty consistent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then what did you do before aesthetic? Obviously you weren't a beginner going in because it's a high volume program. Mm -hmm. What were you yeah, doing leading sure. into that? So I did run uh, anabolic once. Um, cool. And then prior to that, I was just kind of making up my own routines, uh, which uh, probably wasn't the most effective, but I have been listening to you guys for years. So Good deal. I was kind of basing that off of what I've learned from you guys. I know where I know where Sal is trying to to push you right now. Mm -hmm. he, 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 I think he wants you to go to performance. Yeah, and I think that we would probably all agree that you're probably due for that, you know, doing anabolic and doing aesthetic, both uh, very, very sagittal plane focused, right? Yeah, because so, that's like three months of anabolic plus six months of it. So it's like nine months, right? Yeah, so your body is probably due for, and what's great is that a lot of the movements in there are so unique that you're, it's going to be novel to your body. And so you're mm -hmm. going to see great response. So many people, I think if they, if they think they're not like training for a sport or like they care for like vertical or speed, and I think they just kind of discount that program and assume it's mm -hmm. not for them. But we really wrote that program with the intentions of most clients, most all clients going anabolic performance and then aesthetic, pretty much regardless of your goal, unless you had a very, very specific goal, would I maybe avoid that? Uh, just because you, it's so important that we do move the body in, in these different planes and work on rotational strength and we do unilateral work and all that stuff is in performance. So I'm pretty sure that's where you were going. Yeah, oh yeah. And if you think of it too, by going, you know, in the frontal plane and rotating, you're going to um, build and develop muscles that, um, you know, will also complement your aesthetic goals. And I think that totally. a lot of times people don't really consider that like, uh, especially once their body starts to change in that direction and it's providing you a totally new stimulus, which will also benefit you towards your goals. Yeah. Andrea, what are your, what are your goals? What are your specific goals with, with training? Mm -hmm. Um, so aesthetics and just getting stronger and feeling stronger. Yeah. Um, I've been pretty weak most of my life. So being able to feel like I can do things <laughs> is a really good thing. Yeah. You know, okay. So here's, so here's the deal. If you go, so you did anabolic aesthetic twice, if you go to performance and then you go to split, yes. you'll get better results. Yes, okay. you'll be you'll you look. I'll be honest with you. You'll be okay going to split. Um, I don't I don't think you're necessarily going to hurt yourself, but you're going to be avoiding working different planes. And you've already that that'll put that'll bring you a year out mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. avoiding lots of rotational frontal plane work and, and and the mobility work that comes with it. So your chances of overuse injuries and just your body getting stale. Um, goes up quite a bit. If you go performance to split, you'll your your body will for thrive. sure, and yeah. that that will make split more novel than what it will be it, right it's now. It's gonna be so much more effective. So it, if we can give you performance, I want to send that over to you yeah. for well, sure. Well, Andrea, how how much do you trust us? You've been listening to us for a while. Do you <laughs> on a scale of one to ten? How much do you trust our advice? <laughs> A 10. You guys are pretty good. Okay. Uh, okay. So, right. okay, because you said something very nice, I'm, we're going to give you we're going to give you performance and split. But oh, thank you. I, have, I highly 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 recommend you go performance and then go split. So do do performance, follow the whole program, then go to split. I promise you'll be you'll be so happy with the results if you do it that way. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate that. No problem. Um my second part of the question uh was I've I have the no BS six pack program as well. And I was running it with other programs, uh, incorporating into, you know, focus days and trigger session days. And that seemed to really make a lot more sense to me on how to, you mm -hmm. know, mold those two together. Uh, how would you incorporate that sort of, um, ab focus on uh, performance and split? Oh, so same, same thing. Mobility yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. So, so take the ab work out of performance 
mm-hmm. foundational workout. So don't do the ab work on the foundational days, but then do the no BS six pack workouts on your mobility days. Okay. So you'll start your okay. workout with mobility and then go into your six pack abs workout. And then, you know, the next day is your foundational workout. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. You, all right. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you for cool. calling in. Yeah. Thank you guys. Awesome. Yeah. I wish people understood that. About because they think, and I know what happens. They think uh, part, I'm going to sacrifice aesthetics. It's, our, it's for, uh, partly our fault. Yeah. I mean, it's partly our fault. It's uh, you know, we I, we've been hearing it from our marketing team since fucking day one, right? So it's we we wrote these programs thinking like trainers, not like freaking marketers. Yeah, right. and so it's you Bad know people assume they see it and they go. <laughs> I don't identify as a athlete. I'm not trying to train for performance. I care about the way I look. So they right. just discount yeah. that program completely. And the truth is, uh, if you didn't listen to us more than you know three, four years ago, you probably haven't heard us that uh, that many times yeah. say that we wrote it with the intentions of MAPS anabolic, MAPS performance, and then MAPS aesthetic, pretty much for yeah. everyone. I mean, that's yeah. like- yeah. With, with, The with, ultimate fat burning muscle building program. If we just packaged it as one program. Yeah. You know, and then you had to just do the whole thing all the way through. Yes. I think that would be sort it's of It's the one it's the one program I would feel comfortable with someone doing forever. forever. That's the thing too, right? Not that it would be ideal. Ideally you'd go through all of them, right? But if you had to pick just one to do for the rest of your life, it would be mass performance. Well, just because it hits all the functions of, of the joint and it totally. keeps you functional and, and able bodied. Yeah, totally. If you do an aesthetic or bodybuilding style workout maps program. And then you want to know what to do next. Performance. Go mass. I don't care if your goal is aesthetic. I don't care if your goal is athletic. It doesn't matter. Go perform. And then go to another bodybuilding style uh, MAPS program. Watch what happens to your body. You- you'll be blown away. Our next caller is Assad from Texas. Assad, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Uh, cool. First off, thank you for taking my call. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate all the work you guys have been doing. You got uh, it. Um, I, I recently just started listening to you guys and I just got hooked. So, like, during work, I just listen to the podcast all the time. So, I really appreciate the content you guys are putting out. Um, before I start, just a little bit about me. Uh, I've been training since I was 14 years old. I'm 27 now. Uh, I've done football, collegiate cheerleading, uh, bodybuilding. I did men's physique. And uh, recently, this past week, the month of Ramadan just started. And uh, basically, what we do in that time is we fast from uh, sunrise before sunrise all the way to uh, sunset so no food no water uh, until then so I wanted to ask um, you know what would be the best time to train by the way also like our our, uh, our like we're completely tired because we're praying at night as well so like usually I'm getting like right now I'm working out I'm going to the gym around 11 o'clock 11 30 I get done around 1 I come home, I sleep, I wake back up at 5 a.m. Uh, and then I eat and then there's no food or water for the rest of the day until around eight o'clock in, over here in Dallas. Mm. We actually answer this question every year. Yeah. Every yeah. year. It's every a- year we, 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 and it's <laughs> the, and the answer is almost always exactly the same. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, so we'll get into it with you and, you know, we talk a little bit on the podcast, if you've been listening for a while about spiritual health and the importance of that too. I think that's, that that's part of the sphere. Yep. And, you know, what always ends up happening is someone just like you who's in pretty good shape and they're like so concerned they're going to potentially lose gains during this time. And like, what is the, the, the truth is that's not your focus right now. You're, you're doing a spiritual practice right now and most your energy and thought it should, should be focused on that. And even if you were right, even if we were to take all of training off, and I'm not saying that's what you necessarily need to do or should do, but even if you were to take it off completely uh, the the amount of steps back that you're going to take is going to be so minimal, minimal. and the in, and as soon as you get back, you'll probably feel even better and take more steps forward, really really quick. And so instead of stressing about what does the workout exactly look like, or how many times a day, or how intense should it look like, it's like this is the time to to fo- like whatever it is that because you give up something right now. Is that correct? That's what happens during Ramadan. Yeah, I mean right? it's a big sacrifice. Yes. So yeah, so what whatever it is you're giving up, at the idea of this spiritual practice is that you I think are are detaching from things is to be is to be thinking working inward, right? And so uh, mm-hmm. I I'm uh, I love this and I think you should fully embrace that and not let working out and training stress you out that much. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't or you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. It just 
that don't don't allow it to get in the way of your spiritual practice. That is what's most important over this next you know thirty days or yeah. however many days it is. I'll, I'll tell you what, 100%. Assad. If if we were to, I don't even know if these studies exist, but I I would bet money that if they did, this is the result. If you compare groups of people, and one group practiced what you're talking about and really took it seriously, and the other group just worked out all the time, I bet you year after year the group that really placed focus on the spiritual practice would be healthier, leaner, and stronger. So I, it, it, this contributes to health in many different ways and spiritual health is a, is a big, big, big part of it. And I'm assuming it's important to you. That's why you're doing it. Otherwise you wouldn't not eat food or drink water while the sun mm -hmm. was up, right? Now, one, sure. one thing that you said that's important is that you, you go to sleep at 1am and wake up at 5am just so you can fit your workout in. I don't think that's a good idea. I think you're sacrificing your sleep and your health, uh, and trading it for exercise, not really a good trade. Uh, sleep is more important. If you lack of sleep will kill you. Lack of exercise is not going to kill you. It takes a long time to kill you, uh, when it comes to exercise. So I would not trade the two. And, and in one more thought on this is your workouts should complement and improve the quality of your current, of your life in its current state. So the way mm -hmm. you should choose your workouts is, how is it going to make me feel better right now? And, and right now is different than it's going to be when Ramadan is over. So think about it that way. When, when can I work out and be active? And what should my workouts look like so that they make me feel better? Not so that I'm like grinding uh, my body. So that may mean you work out very lightly before you eat or mm -hmm. after, you know, after you start the fast. I'm not sure. It's, you're going to have to answer that for yourself. I don't think trading sleep. That's what I did though. last year. Okay. Yeah. And how did that work? It, it was good. Um, so what I do this year is like right now I sleep like after I fast, I stay up for a little bit and then I sleep till like one o'clock like in the, in the afternoon. Oh, so you do. And doing then I wake up. Okay. Yeah. So I'm making sure like I'm getting sleep in, uh, like I'm, I'm making sure that like I'm prioritizing my sleep. I'm making sure like my spirituality is, is that's like number one thing. So I really appreciate that, Adam. Um, so that's my number one focus, I guess for me is, is like right now I'm doing like maps, uh, performance during the nighttime, but I'm not doing it like to a top notch, like intensity. Oh, good. Like I'm not, I'm not like, movements. you know, I'm not raising the weights. I'm not trying to good. lift heavy or anything like mm -hmm. last year, uh, actually two years ago, sorry, during COVID I, I, you know, had the blessing to go to a gym still. And, but it was during the middle of the day and it was a gym that was, that had no AC, no heater in it. So when I was squatting, like at the last, you know, 29th, 28th day, I hurt my back squatting. And I, mm -hmm. just because I was trying to just, you know, go heavy on legs and I learned my lesson, uh, two years ago. So now I don't go heavy. I'm right now. I'm just focusing on like getting a good pump in, getting good volume mm -hmm. in, uh, not trying to do anything crazy. And I'm making sure that I'm getting my sleep in as well. Oh, bro. You're on the yeah, right you're track. Yeah. yeah. You're doing it the right way. I yeah. mean, the only advice I was going to give was more towards the less damaging side. So that's why. You know, if you, you're familiar with our other program, uh, Maps Anabolic has trigger sessions in between. And mm -hmm. we chose rubber bands for a reason because they're a little bit less damaging, but they still stimulate the muscle enough. So you have that muscle preservation effect to it. But um, what you're doing in terms of just focusing on the movement and, you know, getting getting that type of exercise in through performance, I think is great. Yeah, you're, you're on the right track. I, so you're doing biphasic sleeping, essentially. So you sleep once at night, you wake mm -hmm. up and then you go to sleep again. Yes, sir. How many total hours of sleep are you getting? I'm probably getting around eight to 10, honestly. Oh, like good. I'm making sure I'm getting my sleep in. Yeah. Good, because uh, studies will show, or at least they, they lean in this direction, that if you do biphasic sleeping, which is you sleep twice uh, in a day versus once, that you, you need a, a larger total amount of hours. So if you can get away mm -hmm. with, you know, if you do well on eight hours of sleep at night, and you go biphasic sleep, and you might need more like nine and a half or something like that. Does that okay. make sense? It sounds like yes, that does. Sounds like you're doing a great job, bro. You yeah. really are. I think the the message that I just wanted to make sure you're clear with is that, you know, this is a this is a time. This is a time like we rarely ever would I recommend someone. Oh, don't worry about your working out. But you you're you are really focusing right now on another aspect of health that I believe is mm -hmm. extremely important. And so. You know, as long as that stays as your number one priority and this stuff complement, like the working out part should complement that. It shouldn't be like another stressor for you. And are you familiar with the study that we shared? Like it, we've shared it a few times on the podcast uh, this last year where they did, they did the two groups of people. There was, so, there was one group that 
uh, took a week off every single month of train, no training whatsoever. And then another group that trained every single day for the three months. Did you hear us talk about that? I haven't, but I can research it for sure. Yeah. So it's a, it was a really, it blew my mind. I would, I wouldn't even have thought that it would, this would happen, but there's the group that actually took a week off every third week, completely no training whatsoever. Uh, actually outperformed, saw better results than the group that trained every single day for those. Three you mean months. every single week? Every single week. Yeah, excuse yeah. me for the for those three months. So, the, and the point of me bringing that up is that we it, a lot of the 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 fear that we're going to lose all the muscle or our gains we did most of that's in our head, and you'd be surprised mm -hmm. how little you you're going to step back, even if you reduce yeah. the volume of your training dramatically. And in fact, when you come back and you get after it again, you're going to feel so much more rejuvenated. And then most importantly. You, you you gave yourself that mental space to really work on the spirituality side. Totally, 100%. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for everything. No problem, man. Right on. Thank you. I love this because we do. We get this every single every year. Every year. Every yeah. year we get it, and it's almost always uh, the same type of person, yeah. right? So, mm. uh, somebody who's been training for quite some time, very Where's consistent. Where's our Lent people? Yeah. 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 We, haven't, we haven't got a lot of those questions. Well, so. that's because Lent you choose right, what to give up. And nobody's going to get It's yeah. also shorter, right? Lent is only like two weeks and isn't Ramadan 28 or I 30 so. or something like that? Yeah. I think so. I, th I don't know. I, I don't know so. for sure. But I, I do know that we get this every year, and it's a, a very similar question as far as like, you know, they're always concerned about potentially losing their gains. And I just, you know, this is such a great opportunity. I mean, I, I think this, regardless of your religion or spirituality or your beliefs, I think there's tremendous value Huge. In, Massive. In, in taking 30 days of your yeah. life to work, to Massive solely value. focus on being working inward. Mm -hmm. And I, that that's, I think, one of the most valuable things uh, about a, a practice like this. And so instead of worrying about the other things, I think the idea of that, right, like it, is to completely kind of detach and let go of all those things so you can 100% work totally. inward. So honestly, I, if, it, if it was me, I would, I would let go of training almost completely, mm -hmm. maybe some mobility, yoga Same. type stuff. Um, and not even worry about training at all. And if I were to, it would be very, very minimal and light and practicing yeah. the movement. Yeah, just to kind of charge you up, give yeah. you energy or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, the yeah, the biggest priority is just like getting that kind of spiritual focus and that time uh, with yourself. Yeah. It's, and I had this, con it's funny, I had this conversation with uh, Jessica this morning about sacrifice and, and people confuse sacrifice. They give it the wrong definition. They think sacrificing means that you give up something you like for something that you hate. Sacrifice a good thing. It means you give up something for something better. So I'm not exercising, but this is why, and it's better, and it's better. This is more valuable for this time being. So it's a worthwhile sacrifice, and all of it, like like we're saying, um, improves your health. All of it does. Spiritual practices definitely improve your health, and they contribute to your relationship with exercise and food um, and family in a very, very uh, big way. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 